So this is going to be a, a Leo Sun, Leo Moon, and as well a Leo Rising. Weekly general tarot reading January 26th to February 2nd, uh, 2020. And uh, in case you guys are interested into a personal reading with me, uh, you can check out the description down below of this video and there you're gonna find a, a link to my website. So with that being said, moving into the Leo reading here, seven cards in a row, no particular positions. This is not a spread, so it doesn't get any general uh, than that, any more general than that. So the first one for you, Leo, is going to be the Moon card. And it does look like that this week is going to be a bit on the uh, more unpredictable side. Now, this is because the Moon card, it is a um, it does represent time with not much of what is going on around you is going to be clear to you for a reason being is that at that point, certain circumstances are now forming and they are, how can I say it, uh, they are incorporation into uh, into your career or into your relationship is anybody's guess. However, the moon card, it also represents where one is exactly where one needs to be. So therefore, you should not bail or yeah, exactly. You should not bail on the how can I say it? The goals that you have set before yourself. So what I mean here is that you are working on a certain project and that project, you cannot exactly see where that project project is going toward. That should not be a prerequisite for you to bear on it or, or and to waver as well. If you are trying to make a relationship with someone just because that someone right now is acting in a way that you cannot predict, that doesn't mean that you should give up on that, uh, on that relationship and so on and so forth. Now, this card points that, yeah, right now the times are rather unpredictable. Right now you may feel, um, how do I say it? Insecure, okay? It is because you can't predict what it is around you, but you should not as well deviate from the path that you have chosen, meaning the job you're working, meaning the person you're chasing, meaning the, the, the marriage you're in, and so on and so forth. And for that reason, uh, this week is going to be, like I said, a bit on the downside for you. It is because it doesn't look like that you will have much to play with in order to control you know, the outcome of actions, the outcome as well of um, enterprises and so on and so forth with the moon card. Uh, however, uh, you the one is certain that whatever it is forming here at the start of the week, at least, it is exactly what needs to form so it can shoot you into the right path you need to walk moving forward. Now, the next one is going to be the Hermit, and it correlates deeply with the Moon card, pointing that at that time where you are feeling insecure through the Moon card, you actually need to start dwelling into your intelligence and into your wisdom as well, withdrawing from the ideas of the world and from the ideas of others, meaning that when you are feeling insecure, you will be more prone to kind of like attach yourself into someone else's opinion and not to your opinion, to follow someone else's goal and agenda instead of your agenda. That's why uh, you need to dwell upon your wisdom and intelligence and instead of stupidly following someone else's goal and agenda to just put your back toward them, you know, just, you know, put your back against the world and against the ideas of others. And, uh, you know, uh, contemplating upon what is substantial will allow you and will help you to reveal the path that you need to move on forward, meaning what you should do for work, what you should do for living, whom you have to be with, how you have to be with, and so on and so forth. So that week itself for you, Leo, just with the first two cards, it's a week where you uh, are, how can I say it, where it is a, a process of you setting foot on the right direction that you need to go from now on and on the, on the right path. For yourself, if you will, that is going to focus on a, a substantial enterprise that you need to kind of see it through to the end. Uh, the next one for you guys is going to be the Seven of Swords. And that card represents that additionally to that, the week is going to be rather... Um, on the defensive side from your behalf, this card points that you need to show a strong backbone 
against others, you need to step for your own personal rights, um, uh, if you will, storming situations where you feel that you have been mistreated, um, wrongfully justed, um, um, wrong, wrongfully adjudicated, excuse me, and so on and so forth. The Seven of uh, Swords it is where you identify that the battles you are involved into at that particular point are not your battles and it is time for you to collect your rewards, the spoils of war, if you will, from those those battles that were not your battles and just move toward your own battles. So it's like a week where you are going to as well drop a certain buttons that you are carrying on, which are not your burdens, but also uh, kind of drawing the, the benefits from that you have carried those burdens up until this moment. I don't know how exactly to explain it, but let's say that the way I see it with just those three cards is that this week it is where you detach yourself from a dependency. You're detaching uh, yourself from a war, from a battle or from an enterprise that is simply not yours to uh, to do no different than making money for someone. Why? While you with the same kind of like efforts and performance, you can start making money for yourself instead. All right. And that that is exactly, you know, what those two, uh, three cards may point toward. So it's like thinking more toward what, can, what, what you can do for yourself rather than what you can do toward people that are highly ungrateful at the end of the day for your investment into their agenda. The uh, fourth card for you, Leo, is going to be the Seven of Wands and uh, uh, that detachment of yours is not going to be taken lightly. I mean, those people that you are or those situations that you are detaching from, they're not going to be very happy of it at all. And... Uh, with the Seven of Wands, there will be a lot of resistance here um, towards you detaching, if you will. And that resistance kind of plays uh, through, let's say, rumors and through, I don't know how to say it, I would say it mental cruelty. What I mean here, it is that as soon as you start detaching, you know, from those people, enterprises, it may be detaching from a, a noxious relationship, should you say, or from abusive marriage, should you say as well, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a, a, a game of intimidation. I mean, those people or those situations that you are detaching from, identifying that they are just not your future here, they will try to intimidate you in one way or another and if they don't be and if they are not able to intimidate you they will try to undermine the future benefits of yours now how you can overcome the seven of wands well seven of wands is overcome when one has a readiness to jump into action when the moment and the place is right okay so it's a very kind of like a, a difficult influence to overcome but if you scope the moment, the right moment, and you have that readiness for action, you can definitely do it. However, when, when the time comes and you have to press and you have to retaliate, you should be ruthless about it. I mean, you should show no remorse of fear, pity, and etc etc and just annihilate your rivals, annihilate your competition, and it's kind of like destroy them uh, if you uh, if you if you prefer to say it uh, to say it that well that that way that is for a reason being it is that the seven of wands it is where one needs to guard their um, their life if you're not life in the physical form like your life is threatened but to guard everything you have reached and everything that it is up to be reached moving forward into the future and here we do have a rivalry that does not want to see you there all right and you have to, like we saw with the Seven of uh, Swords as well, you have to stand for your rights and you have to show strong backbone and you need to step forward and defend, you know, your goals, your ideas, your marriage, for example, okay, your career and so on and so forth. What you need to defend what is substantial for you, which you are to identify at the start of the week. So the fifth card here is going to be the Four of Pentacles. And with this card, we can see what that week is all about here. That week is about you exactly taking a defensive measures in, uh, toward, you know, your future goals, your future agendas, the current uh, fruits of labor that you have collected up until this moment. And whilst you are taking that defensive measure toward them, you also also a um, 
are you are also ensuring a secure future for them so it's like making the very first important actions you know to secure the future of your marriage say of your relationship say you know of your job as well uh, <clears throat> and there so there are no fluctuations moving forward into the future so there are no ups and downs in uh, one way or the other but as we can saw with the previous cards here guys it all comes through careful deliberation patience as well and um adopting actions at the right moment and at the right place as well you, so you should not be frantic at all when you're trying to cope with the competition with the rivalry with the enemies and uh, etc etc so the sixth card that we do have for you is going to be the nine of wands and nine of wands is a clear sign that at the end of the day you will be able to overcome your competition but also the card it is about um making the necessary adaptations and the necessary uh, changes, if you will, into one strategy, how to do so. The Nine of Wanted is the card where one needs to arm himself with uh, the patience and the perseverance that uh, one always has within themselves so they can go through the rapidly approaching storm that it is coming on the horizon. And this storm, it is your competition and your rivalry. So for what I can see here from those cards, guys, you do have a lot to overcome throughout the week. There are people that just don't want to see you prevailing marriage-wise, career-wise. You, you, you do have enemies, okay? And this week, it is the week where you detach from those enemies. This week, it is where you make those enemy, enemies is completely irrelevant to your future advance toward the goal toward you know your uh, creating family for example or being lucrative into one career now <clears throat> the nine of wands is also touches the subject of previous experience and when we talk about previous experience one needs to dwell upon that previous experience so can identify which aspects of the strategy that one is uh, making needs to be reshuffled they need to be restructured which from another standpoint kind of means that uh, there is a definitely what you can improve in your plans and in the actions that you are anticipating of taking and the last card for you leo is going to be the king of swords so we do have a person and this is where competition finally reveals itself okay um that is a a person who is uh, i can't it's not wealthy that was not the world the word that i was searching for that is a, a person who is very i would say powerful it simply has a connections okay that is a, a person who it doesn't take things personally. It is just your detachment from their battle, from their war, from the, for example, you want to leave your job, okay? And that will not going to be taken lightly by the owner of the company. It is because you serve a purpose in that job. And now as you are leaving that job, you will no longer serve that purpose and they cannot replace you, okay? And for that reason, if they can't be as successful as they can with you, they will try to make sure that you are not going to be as successful as you can be in your new path. But as we saw, you can definitely retaliate into that competition as long as you are patient enough to wait for, to wait for the right moment and the right place to do it. So another thing with the knight, with the king of uh, swords, as we said, this is no personal. It is just how they operate. They believe that everything is, it, it, it is like a machine and... Uh, Everybody is a part of that machine and it does look like the chill path of the machine. It's it's no longer be there so the machine cannot work. You have to be careful with the King of Swords because they are um, they are capable of very decisive and as well effective and ruthless actions also. So uh, as soon as you make them completely irrelevant to your future, just close the door to that future for them. Don't, uh, don't wage that war, uh, that war or that battle longer than it needs to be waged. So that being said, Leo, this was your weekly general tarot reading. Few thoughts on my behalf on these cards, guys. Uh, well, to me, that is um, a uh, a week of a I would say at the wake up call where you understand that uh, your place it is uh, you are not 
where you belong to, where you belongs to be and you are going to take the necessary measures in order to fix that which is going to be successful it is just for in that process there are to be those uh, people whom you are not serving the supposed purpose any longer which will try to um, either discourage you moving forward with your things or will try to intimidate you, blackmail you and so on and so forth so they can keep you around and uh, you continue on serving their purpose and you can definitely retaliate or overcome this competition. So yeah, that being said guys, this was your a uh, weekly tarot reading general tarot reading leo hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked it guys and we're gonna see each other next time until then bye